Now we know there somehow should be an enterprise information system, an enterprise information system supporting uh, our company for the business processes, for the data storage needs, um, what we all need. Um, and now we somehow need to tell a computer science guy, somehow need to tell the uh, computer software specialist what should the enterprise information system look like and therefore the tool integrated architecture is used. We want to generate an integrated architecture and we also want to use uh, proper modeling and communication tools in order to talk to the specialists uh, setting up the information system, setting up our enterprise information system. Just a quick reminder on information system. Information system consists of three parts. The processes, processes in which information is somehow needed, information is processed, information is generated maybe also. Then there are also data carriers, classical data carriers are forms, paper-based forms, electronic uh, data carriers are hard disks, databases, something like that. And the third is that you need to think about the operators. So the entities, human or electronic entities, which somehow deal with information in the processes. They somehow consume information to do their work. They somehow produce also information while doing their work. And they somehow also process the information. And we also have to keep the difference in mind. Uh, if we look into the information system, then we have one part, which is classical, which is non-computer based. This is the non-computer based part of the information system, obviously. Uh, refers to paper based forms, refers to any activities, which is, uh, which are not uh, mapped to the ERP system yet the electronic part. And as mentioned, the computer-based part of the information system, basically the ERP system or some satellite systems and some additional systems supporting the core ERP system. And now the question is, we have such an information system we somehow want to systematically develop it. We somehow might be in need for advancing our information system, maybe also for enhancing it with a new electronic part. And therefore, we somehow need to generate an overview of the architecture, an overview of the overall system, and there, the integrated architecture comes into the game. Now we are somehow in need for such an integrated architecture. And let's think about how we create this architecture and what tools, what methods we use for uh, developing such an integrated architecture. Um, Actually, this uh, this approach is topic uh, for for research in in, in the last uh, decades already, and uh, one one professor which is uh, very popular in this field is Professor August Wilhelm Scheer. He worked at the Saarland University at Institute for Business Informatics, and he developed a method which is called ARIS. ARIS as an abbreviation for Architecture of Integrated Information Systems and ARIS also as a software tool. And um, in this ARIS method, 
August Wilhelm Scheer developed an approach for systematically modeling, systematically thinking about the computer-based part of the information system. The computer-based part and how the computer-based part fits into the process landscape, into the processes which are performed within the enterprise. August Wilhelm Scheer also found a company uh, dealing with that topic. The company was named uh, IDS Scheer. The company actually was founded in uh, 1984. So when the um, ideas came up to deploy computers in enterprise processes, um, Ideas Share developed uh, the appropriate method, ARIS, for systematically modeling that. And um, the company actually was very successful, uh, developed the tool ARIS, uh, for decades, and in 2009, the company was bought by uh, the larger company Software AG. Actually, IDS Share was one of the largest uh, German companies at that time, and very successful in this um, enterprise software market, especially in this market for modeling the um, enterprise processes regarding the information system. ARIS actually, as I said, is a, a method, theoretical method, a, a thought pattern, a, an approach of thinking. And ARIS is also a software tool set. If we refer to ARIS here in the lecture, then we mainly think about the thought pattern the approach of thinking, the approach of modeling, the interaction between the computer-based part and the processes. Now, if we go into this uh, modeling of the integrated architecture, we have some questions to ask. And these questions here are uh, just a short glimpse on, on the questions uh, arising. Uh, first question might be, um, which enterprise processes in our companies need to be supported? So which activities do we have? Uh, how do the activities follow on each other? That's what is the part of the first question. And need to be supported means we somehow have computer systems deployed in our enterprise and we somehow want to model this interaction between the processes and the support by the computer-based part of the information system. The second question, which functions, which tasks, transactions are required, refers to more detail of the enterprise information system. So you might have certain functions in your enterprise information system, in your ERP system. You might know that these functions somehow have to provide you forms for putting in data, somehow have to do some processing, whatever. And in the ours approach, you also think about these tasks, these functions. So you don't only think about the activities which are done in the processes, but also about the functions in the software, in the ERP system, which should provide you support from the computer-based part, from the ERP part. Then you think about the data, which data are required and which data are produced and maybe also which data are processed in a certain way. That means that you know that you have some information in your business processes. You know that you somehow have to deal with this information and you also model this information in regards to your process. So putting some data into a process, processing some data in a process and maybe also 
the aspect of generating data within a process and then saving again these data for persistency. So important also dealing with the data in your business processes. Which organizational structures, which agents are involved, which operators are involved? So that means that uh, you run business processes, you have certain activities, and you also want to model the relation to your employees or to your uh, to your algorithms, which somehow deal with the uh, processing of information. And that's why you need the organizational structure. You need to model the organizational structure. And you also need to refer to this organized organizational structure when you model the processes. So referring to an organizational structure might mean that you model activities, you model uh, what has to be done in these activities, and then you also say, in this activity, a person from department XY is responsible. And with this responsibility, with this assigned responsibility, you say what organizational structures, what operators, agents are involved in the activities. One important task for the RS approach. You also say which resources might be required. Resources, for example, machines, machines or other resources, and uh, how they contribute in the process. And finally, uh, there might also be the question of the connections between the elements. And that means that uh, you do not only have the uh, process flow where activities are connected to each other in a certain uh, direction, in a certain sequence, but you might also have connections to your functions, to your functions in the ERP system which you are able to model, and then you might uh, fix these connections in the RS modeling approach. If you look into our approach, uh, the, the RS method, then we also need to talk about two important uh, terminologies. First one is business process, second is conditions. The business process actually is something which is performed within the organization. It consists of, um, of activities, basically, and these activities are connected by events. So imagine there uh, is some state within the enterprise. Some uh, at, at some time you look into the enterprise, and uh, you will then see that people are doing something, and that people finish their doing also. They finish their activities, and then a certain state is reached. For example, a product is produced or information is processed. And that means that activities are important on the one hand, the, the things uh, which, which people perform, and as, as a result maybe of activities, events can arise. Events can happen, and these events can also trigger other activities. So imagine the people produce something, the people um, finish maybe a certain lot of products and then the event might arise that this lot is finished and the lot has uh, to be processed in logistics, for example. So events and activities are important for business processes. What is also important is, of course, that you somehow perform the activities in the right sequence. So you have a certain temporal connection, the activities are done after each other. And uh, you also need it in a logical connection. So if you have a certain sequence, then 
the sequence should rely on the on the aspects of the physical production of your product for example this is a kind of logical connection you cannot do uh, the other thing before you did uh, the first thing and you also would model these uh, connections in your rs approach and this is uh, of course important for your business process because your business pro process needs to be logical and needs to model these temporal aspects And you, uh, you uh, focus in your business process on a certain goal, on a certain goal supporting the company goal. So you don't uh, do the business process for itself. You perform the business process to either directly reach a company goal or to indirectly support a company goal. And that's why in a business process, you are focused on a certain target. Beside the business process, you also have conditions. The conditions actually describe what is around in your activities, what is what happens in your. Uh, in your company, what is the state? Was uh, is the status of uh, certain physical or uh, process values? And you need these conditions to, so to say, surround your activities by a certain environment, by certain certain circumstances. And uh, these conditions can be triggered by an, by an event. These conditions, of course, surround and uh, accompany activities. These conditions also contain things which are required for the business process. For example, um, they contain the, the working steps, they contain data, documents, they contain the operators, which somehow have to perform the activities. And these conditions actually are completed by an event. So the conditions are done at some time, and then uh, you can say that uh, these conditions somehow are finished.